These are in listen-only mode. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Now it's time to start. So yeah, thank you for joining today's webinar session, the HKU and new webinar series. Uh, it's uh, actually it's our second webinar series already. So it is about familiarizing yourself with HK, I mean Hong Kong and Hong Kong, the University of Hong Kong. So yeah, so this presentation is about our campus and our, I mean your life in Hong Kong and in Hong Kong U. So this is the brief. Uh, Sorry, so now you can, probably now you can see our screen. So yeah, this is our uh, presentation rundown. So I'm gonna cover this topic. And today we have invited one of student ambassador, which is who are current student of uh, Hong Kong U, and he's a representative of Hong Kong U, like a face of Hong Kong U. So OIS from the Faculty of Engineering, your second year, right? Yeah. Yes, so we have a student sharing session after the presentation, so hopefully uh, you can stay until the end so you can hear about the student side story as well. So yeah, let's start. So before before I'm going to talk about our uh, Hong Kong U campus and about our uh, like uh, facilities, I believe I should tell you more about Hong Kong itself as well. So it's a really brief background of Hong Kong. So yeah, the language that used in Hong Kong are normally English, Cantonese, or Mandarin. But yeah, most of the, I mean, not most of the, like I can say like 90% of the, I mean, 100% of the lectures are going to be in English. But like a local area, if you go out from the campus, they, you, can, you, you will hear about the Cantonese and Mandarin as well. So that's the language that we use in Hong Kong. And about like the average temperature, uh, Hong Kong has a longer summer than winter but I can't really call this a winter because I feel like it's a little bit hotter than any other northern part of the earth. So the lowest I could feel is average around 18 degrees. So maybe for some of the students from like the equator it might feel it's a cold, but if you're from the northern part of the earth, then it might be still very hot for you. But it's quite cold if you are used to Hong Kong. So that's the average temperature. And for currency, we, we used Hong Kong dollar. And to give you a rough idea about the Hong Kong dollar, it's now US one US dollar is about 7.8 Hong Kong dollar. So now hopefully you get about our currency as well. So that's really brief background about Hong Kong. Okay. And about our, now I will move on to our uh, Hong Kong U campus. So this is the map of our Hong Kong HKU campus. So we can, it's quite big, it's quite big. So uh, like four years ago, three to four years ago, we kind of opened new campus. We call that Centennial Campus, which is the Western, I mean, Western part of the campus. So we can divide our main, I mean, big campus, I mean, the main campus into two different parts. So first one is the HK, our main campus. So most of the uh, business class and common core course class, or let's say engineering, or science classes will be held in main campus. So most of the lectures are will be in main campus. And these are some of the photos, so, okay. And we also have Centennial Campus, which is the new campus. It's only, as I say, it's only four to three years old campus. And most of the class from Faculty of Arts, Faculty of Law, and Faculty of Social Sciences will be held in uh, Centennial Campus. So, and these are some of the pictures. It's a it's a beautiful campus, and it's we the, the theme of the campus is the sustainability and green campus. So you will see many different uh, gardens and like park and different different uh, plants there. Okay, and I believe there are some medicine students here, and we have a separate medical campus, which is uh, I I mean it's. It's separated from the our Centennial and main campus. It's about uh, 15 minutes by bus from the main campus. And yeah, we, you have a different medical campus and it's it's nice. They, they have a really nice view there. And these, these two are the example of the, uh, I mean, photo of the medical campus. And we have another campus, which is the, which 
is for the Faculty of Dentistry. Uh, again, it's not in the main campus, but it's very close to our campus. And but but you have a different campus for the dentistry student, and they have their public hospital there as well. So many patients and people are visiting your campus for your uh, for their dental care. So you will have chance to meet patients between. Uh, I mean, during your study time. So just just be in mind that there is a separate campus for medical stu uh, students and dental students. And about the accommodations, so we we have really different, I mean, several student halls so are available in Hong Kong U, but some of them are on campus, but some of them are near, I mean, around campus. So we have, we can divide them into student village. So we have one student village one, which are Richie Hall, Lady Hotong Hall, and Sa Hall. And some uh, Richie Halls are only for male, and some uh, Lady Hotong is only for female, and Sa Halls are male and female. And we also have a student village too. There are some male only hall and mix, I mean, unisex or mixed uh, halls for male and female. And we have Student Village 3, which is the newest and brand new uh, residential college. So we have total four different colleges there. And it's about, we have a shuttle from there because it's quite not very far, but it's not that close to the, to the, to the campus. But we have a shuttle service. And so students just take shuttle to, 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 to go to the lectures and to go back to the college. So that's the Student Village 3. And we have Sasun Road, camp, I mean village, which is right next to the medical campus. So many of the medicine students are staying there and also not only for medical students, but also many uh, different students from different faculties are also staying there. And it's, there, there are three different halls and it's about 15 minutes away from the, uh, from the main campus by bus. And it's a working distance from the medical campus. And we have one uh, hall at the Pokfam Road, which is the university hall only for male students. And it's about more, around 20 to 25 minutes from main campus by, by bus. But it's a really nice hall and they have a really good history and its traditions as well. And there are two different uh, on-campus student hall, which is Simon K.Y. Lee Hall and Swayo Hall. I would say they are, they are right next to the your lecture room and it's it's literally on, on campus like like one minute away from the campus so again it's a, it's a really popular because it's next to the, like a lecture room and next to the next to the everything but yeah there's a two different on campus hall and these are some of the uh, pictures of the uh, different student halls and different uh, village so it's always where do you live uh, no? Mark, I live in Morrison Hall, really? and as you mentioned, the different student villages. Uh -huh. uh, my hall is in Student Village too. Two, okay. So the best best part about the location is that Flora Hall Sports Center. Oh one yeah, of the, the biggest, sports facility, yeah. yeah. One of the biggest sports centers of the university okay. is like one minute away, so oh, I yes. can literally get out of my room and go to the gym in no okay. time. And uh, it's like uh, a three-minute walk from campus. Okay. But some lazy people even take the <laughs> shuttle bus for that. Oh, you have shuttle bus from there. Yeah, okay. yeah. It cool. takes That's you cool. from the gate of Morrison Hall. So if you're like extremely lazy, you can take a three-minute <laughs> shuttle bus ride. Yeah, yeah, yes. Of Otherwise, course. it like the it gives me the perfect morning walk. Okay. Yeah, to campus, it's just yeah, like three, three to, five, to minutes. five minutes away, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. So as you can see, we have like quite good shuttle bus bus system and like some people they just walk because all the student village are working distance like student village one and two okay and these are some of the pictures from the room so we have like a, we have a, like shared room for two and one thing uh, we also have like single room really depends on uh it's not only i mean single rooms are not only for everyone because we have limited number of a single room and some some common rooms so many of the students they cook and they eat there and do some like gathering there as well so these are some of the examples but I can tell you more about food later on so please just moment and also uh, this is for your information because I understand that some of you might not interested in 
thing in a student hall. But yeah, these are some of our examples. For example, we have the university rented off campus housing and it's located near campus and it's a shared, shared flat with three to four different students. So this might can be another option for you. And we also, uh, as you can, as everyone knows that uh, rent in Hong Kong is extremely expensive. So our school, I mean, university is trying to help students to get the, their, their own flat by providing bursary. So maximum reimbursement amount to the applicant will be um, 26,000 per year. So it's really helpful and you can always apply to it if you're, uh, if you're uh, thinking to uh, rent your own flat around campus. So this can be other options and other supports from our uh, student uh, help, our student affairs department. Yeah, and also about the food and food. So food is very important because you have to eat every day, right? So yeah, uh, the campus is very crowded. So, but then we have several different restaurants and kiosks are available uh, around campus. So we have total 18 different restaurants, including one vegetarian restaurant and one halal, halal restaurant as well. So yeah, many, so vegetarian students, they go to the vegetarian restaurant and many different uh, halal students, I mean, they, 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 they do go to the restaurant as well. And there are different student canteens and like a coffee shop. And as you can see, we have Subway as well. It's really popular. So there are different options. But as I said, it's a really sometimes it's really crowded, and maybe the line will be the waiting line might be a little bit longer than you expected. Then don't worry about that because around campus there are many different um, restaurants are available as well. So these are some of the examples that you can choose to go for uh, food around campus. Let's say High Street, which is for fine dining and casual drink, if you like drinks for uh, after class. And we have like a water street, which which is very close, like five to eight minutes. It's working distance and different restaurants and different casual lunch meals are available. And as you can see, it's really close to the universities and different high schools. They, they do offer like a student lunch set as well. So the price is not that high. It's very cheap and quite good. And maybe Kennedy Town, it's, it's next to the residential, I mean, student village three and it's about 15 minutes away from the main campus and there are many different local restaurants are available as well so yeah it's another options for you and do you do you often go out for uh, your dinner or lunch part of my favorite place is kennedy town kennedy town yeah because uh, not because of like all the restaurants that you find there mm -hmm. uh, you can actually grab some food and go to the pier oh the yeah Harvard. pier yeah yeah, yeah. The harbor is like uh, an amazing place to sit. You've got benches and everything mm, there. So yeah. You can like casually go for a small picnic. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Grab your food and go there and have like food near the sea. And it's like a wonderful feeling. Yeah, I have a, I have a same. I mean, I, I love that too. I always, uh, during my study time, I always go there to eat and let's say drink sometime <laughs> and it's a good place yeah because uh hong kong we we are, we are at the hong kong island the hk is at the hong kong island so there are different harbors around uh around campus and students always visit there for like a really short picnic let's say and for, for rest and yeah you can always grab your food and go there to eat during your uh lunch time or dinner time okay and yeah about our, it, it can be another option, which is a common room, because every, each floor in your accommodation, I mean your dormitory, they will have a pantry, we call the pantry, which is common room, and you can cook there. Although you cannot cook like a really fancy dinner or, or like a really like a steak or whatever, but you can cook really uh, casual uh, dinner or lunch there. And actually many of the students, they choose to cook by themselves. And sometimes they just invite our uh, different friends from different places and they, they cook together and share their food. And I'm pretty sure you have a similar experience, right? Uh, yes, Park. Uh, the pantry is actually the place in the hall which, where I spend my, uh, the most of my time. <laughs> and um, it's not just about like the food. Uh, you have a TV, a big TV yes. in like, yeah, each TV. of the pantries. And mm -hmm. most of the floors have uh, Xbox or no, PlayStation, PlayStation or yeah, yeah. So it's like uh, 
a great evening with your friends if you invite them. Yeah, and of cook, course. And you also like play, uh, play and play like, Xbox and, and everything. Spend some time. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So yeah, it can be uh, another option for maybe for dinner. For lunch, you might not have time to go there because we you might have a different lectures and you might need to do the assignment but yeah many of the students spend their dinner time at the common room as I as our student ambassador always has shared and yeah it, it can be another option for you yeah and that's about the food and different options but I think this can be another good information for you that has her scare so it's it's my, some of you might thinking about like insurance or, or my, my thinking that Hong Kong has a really expensive medical services. Uh, I can say yes, it's sometimes it's expensive, but for university student, I mean HKU university student is a different story because we, we have the university health service, we call it UHS shortly. So they do provide medical consultations and dental consultations as well. And the eligibility is that as you, uh, all full-time HKU undergraduate students, that means all of you are able to join, I mean enjoy this uh, medical and dental consultation services anytime and you can just go online or if you're really sick then you can just visit and ask for the consultations and fee are generally for fee generally medical consultations are free of charge and for dental consultation it's provided at a cost but again it's very cheap compared to outside so you you I, I'm pretty sure you might you don't have to worry about the fee because it's very cheap even if they sometimes require some uh, uh, extra cost because you might need like extra medi medication might so and then then but then the fee that fees are really cheap so don't worry about it but we understand that some of you might need some advanced medical checkup or treatment in the future I mean maybe so you can always visit public hospital so even if we call that public hospital, so for international student, you don't have to worry about it because if you have every international student, the non-local student will receive an HK Hong Kong identity card. That means you can always bring that Hong Kong identity card to visit the public hospital and then all the treatment will be same as a local uh, in Hong Kong. So the fees are really cheap again, although it's a little bit expensive than the university house uh, services but then still it's again very cheap and it can you they, they provide advanced medical checkup or treatment so you can always visit the public hospital and it's we and next to I mean we have we call the Queen Mary Hospital which is like 10 minutes away from our campus and it's one of the top 10 in the world as a, as a, as a public hospital and it's a really a good hospital so if, even if you have a serious illness or serious uh, something uh, with your with your health don't worry about it because we have a good uh, public hospital system in Hong Kong <clears throat> and about the transportations so yeah there, there are di different public transportation options but then uh, commonly we use MTR which is Hong Kong Metro so we do have Hong Kong new stations is nearly, I mean, it's quite brand new. It's only four to four years old. And it's connected to major districts around Hong Kong. And average fare is around $5 to $13. But that's not including, I mean, that's that's for normal fare. But it, you can get the, you can, you're, you'll be able to get student discount, which is 50%. So we have this octopus card, which is the uh, smart card, and it's a rechargeable and it's a transport in, it's a rechargeable card for the transportation and also for other payment rent. So let's say for supermarket or convenience store or any other shops. And you can apply, you, you, you can apply for the student octopus card and it will provide students a 50% discount for the MTR fare but unfortunately not for bus yeah. but still that's a lot because you mostly you will use the MTR because it yeah as I say it's connected to the major districts around Hong Kong so I'm pretty sure you have the student of the bus car as well right yes yeah, so I have the fancy personalized student <laughs> of the bus card with my photo on it all right and um, 
honestly, after coming to Hong Kong, I don't really carry cash anymore. That's right. Because the octopus card is like super convenient. It's That's well right. known throughout the world that Hong Kong has a one it has one source of payment for everything. True. So it's not only just the bus or the uh, trains. That's it's, right. it's honestly anything and everything. You yeah, can get any, anywhere from like your octopus card. Some sometimes it's some of the convenient. restaurant. Yeah, sometimes yeah. some of the restaurant they do a set. Octopus yes. for the payment method, and I'm sometimes I surprised. Okay, you do you accept octopus, and yeah, it's a very convenient, and you want to have like a like a small coins and small cents on your room, and don't yeah, it's a very convenient octopus card. You can also get like an octopus watch and use it yes. as an octopus card. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes <laughs> people just lose their octopus card, yeah. so they do have like an octopus watch <laughs> which can be purchased at the MTR stations but yeah you can you can try that if you're if you always lose your uh, small different uh, car from your uh, your home and yeah as I say so MTR is connected to the different major districts and different um, district around Hong Kong and this is some of the example as you can see we have uh, I circled it in orange so you can see that if you go to central which is uh like a like a literally center of the hong kong island it only takes six minutes and if you go like a causeway bay which is another very uh, crowded and uh, another center of the hong kong island we usually go there for shopping we usually go there for like movie or like a, for, for for your free time but it only takes 12 minutes from the Hong Kong U, and let's say only 14 minutes to the TS uh, Chimsa Tree, which is another center, or 20 minutes to the Mongko, which is another center. And we we regularly and we always visit those different districts. But then it's really convenient because of the uh, MGR stations, and it's only 40 minutes away from the uh, airport. So as you can see, it's very convenient and. We regularly and not regularly, every day. It's kind of everyday life. And one of like the most amazing things is that mm -hmm. if you ever get lost somewhere in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. you are never too far from an MTR. That's right. Yeah. So <laughs> if you ever get lost, just, just look for the MTR sign, sign. Get yeah. in the station. Yes. And then get to your house. Yeah. Just <laughs> just get into the MTR if you're lost. Then you can you can arrive at the HKU station yeah. within like. Yeah. I would say within 40 minutes, very easy, not maximum, not maximum either. one hour, even if you're from Shenzhen, it <laughs> might takes around one hour only, so it's very convenient and connected. So yeah, and yeah, I think that's about the, that's about brief background about Hong Kong and about Hong Kong U. And as I say, we have invited student ambassador and he will briefly and go through about the student side story about like the clubs and society and every activities so hopefully you can enjoy that as well and thank you Owais. Thank you Sorry. Park. Um, so my name is Owais Kearney and because it's I don't know why it's so hard for people to pronounce my name so I just <laughs> go with okay so you can call me okay. All right so let's start with the sharing first. So I, I'm pretty sure like most of you are really excited to know what extracurriculars you're gonna do in Hong Kong U because I'm sure you're like already loaded with the information about courses and your majors and curriculums. Mm -hmm. But I think it's very important for you to know about the extracurricular opportunities available here for you. Because once you like, because I'm applying for internships and everything right now. Mm -hmm. And once you start applying for internships or projects or even like jobs, um, they, they put like, the employers put a lot of emphasis on That's right. the extracurricular experience right. that you've gotten through your studies mm -hmm. and any skills that you develop through them. So like Hong Kong U has a very vast umbrella of um, extracurricular societies. That's right. So let's start with my favorite or the sports ones. So we've got 25 sports societies in the university. Um, they range from the very traditional Hong Kong sports like dragon boating. Mm. Dragon boating is like incredible. It's scary, yeah. but it's really incredible. So I'm sure many of you are gonna want to try that. Uh, other than that, like we've got like any sports that you'll be interested in. For example, uh, if some of you like cricket, yeah, we, we have the cricket. Unlike yeah. most of the international universities in the world, we've got a proper cricket club here. 
and we play like every almost every Sunday. Wow. So uh, that's developed. Other than that, like the traditional sports, we've got uh, football and we've got squash, we've basketball. got basketball, name it, we have it. And um, we've got the facilities to support that too, like uh, yeah. the Stanley Hill Sports Center, which is the biggest that we have. It's got about four football pitches mm -hmm. and they are located right beside the sea. So uh, it's yeah. an amazing atmosphere amazing deal, if, yeah. you, if you like playing football. So sports also like take place at different levels. So if you're one of the top players, you could apply or you could try out for the university teams or the U teams, and you can get one of those fancy shirts that gentlemen in that photo are wearing, <laughs> like the jerseys. And uh, if if you don't want to be so committed with sports, uh, because uni sports can be quite challenging, you can go for the faculty level competitions. And the faculty level competitions are intra faculty and inter faculty. So you are competing against uh, different uh, organizations there. And then uh, last but not the least, we have sports at the hall level too. Mm. So Park mentioned a lot about uh, halls and the accommodation facilities that we have. But one of the shining features of the halls is actually the sports team and the sports spirit that they have. Mm. We've got about 14 sports when it comes to inter-hall competitions. That's right. And they're like really formal and they're very, very serious. So it, they happen like throughout the year. Some of them are, about seven of them happen in the first semester and seven later. And hall teams like, they, they, they prepare really diligently for these competitions. Yeah, they're very it's, intense. Yeah. It's very, very intense. That's and right. uh, because of that, like, I guess uh, sports gives you one channel to integrate into the atmosphere here and get to know the local people and fellow international people here. So if you really join one of these sports teams, you're going to be much better off. That's right. But it's perfectly okay if you don't play sports because you can join one of these teams and start as a beginner. So all of these sports, they have like two or three levels for the beginners, intermediaries, and then the experts. So uh, if you just want to try out one sport, you can actually just jump in and start learning from scratch. Mm -hmm. uh, the IHP or the sports uh, department that we have in university, it also offers sports courses. Mm -hmm. And even those are offered at the beginner level. Mm -hmm. So I am uh, really proud to tell you that I learned swimming when I came to Hong Kong. Oh. I took one of the beginner swimming courses. Was it your first time? Like it was my first training? time, yeah. How was yeah. it? How was it? Like, it was really good. Like they started with uh, like removing our fear of water because I'm really scared of <laughs> drowning. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that was really nice. It was a uh, four week, uh, I guess no, it was a six week course, mm -hmm. but it wasn't too intense and it wasn't too Yeah, for beginners. Yeah, yeah. It, it was a lot of fun actually. Oh. So moving on from sports. Um, Let's talk about the sports facilities, of course. I talked about Flora Ho, which is located right beside my hall, and it's about, again, a three-minute walk from university. Um, IHP, like, if you uh, go to the gym often and you can't really go to Flora Ho or Stanley Ho, you don't have so much time or no, uh, might be very busy flexibility, to yeah. Mm -hmm. Then there's a gym located uh, on campus, in Centennial Campus. It's pretty advanced and it's pretty nice. So you can even like, you have locker and shower facilities there too. So it's pretty convenient even for people who are living on, in halls which are located on campus. That's right. right? Um, so the sports facilities, you, you don't have to register for them because when you come to HKU, you'll get your uh, student, card. student card and then you can use your student card to access each and every equipment, yeah. room, Easily, anything yeah. that you have. And you're gonna, uh, you can like uh, book facilities from the HKU portal that we are gonna have. So every yeah. booking is online. Tennis court and like squash. Yeah. We but can, make can. sure like when you book, you go because if you don't, you have to pay $50. <laughs> <laughs> but you can, you can always cancel it if you are yes. suddenly got some like assignment to do. Yeah, just be more it. responsible or that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, moving on, um, for those of you who are bored by sports, you don't really do sports much, but are interested in the arts or other societies that we have, mm -hmm. then we've got like a plethora of a lot of societies. They are... Um, classified into different categories. For example, if you are more into the academic societies, then we have uh, societies for each and every educational department that we have. Mm -hmm. So for my, uh, me, uh, there's a big umbrella of the engineering society, mm -hmm. which arranges a lot of talks, a lot of workshops and events and networking opportunities for you. 
And under that umbrella, we've got um, different associations. For example, I'm studying computer science, and computer science department has a computer science association. Mm -hmm. So these are the academic uh, societies under every department. Other than that, you've got societies for chess, uh, bridge, music, photography, calligraphy. So you can just, sorry, even for these societies, if you just are interested in something, you can join them as members, and like step by step, you get to learn a lot of stuff. That's right. Um, move on some of the other uh, categories of societies that you have they include uh, religious associations so we've got the Catholic Society we've got a society for Muslim students and they are uh, like uh, really active too mm -hmm. so don't think that it's gonna be too much of a cultural shock when you come to Hong Kong you as far as religion is concerned so you can obviously like keep on practicing your religion with other people who share the same faith mm -hmm. And uh, we've got some NGO ambassadors as well. So if you're into social service, these societies are the perfect uh, place for you. We've got societies for Amnesty International, mm -hmm. and we've got uh, UNICEF. Uh, we've got a lot of branches for different societies. We've got a branch of WWF as well. Uh, these branches actually uh, collaborate a lot of events, and these are really good networking opportunities for you to even like meet future employers. So uh, one more thing is that like these societies are totally student driven. Mm. So it's it's not like a teacher is gonna dictate or a professor is gonna dictate terms to you. The society is totally run by an executive committee of students. Student. And first year students are normally encouraged to join these societies. So most of these societies are being led by first year and second year students. Mm. And like uh, other than the skill set that they, these societies offer, like the specialized skill set, one thing in common is that you get to uh, have a lot of managerial experience. Uh, the experience to manage societies, the experience to meet deadlines and balance your time. That's gonna be. Uh, that's one thing that I found really helpful. Hmm. So once again, um, it's like talking about food is kind of never enough. So we're gonna <laughs> talk about it in every webinar yes. that we do. So. Uh, the food ranges from like it's got a lot of range when it comes to price so uh, and it's also got a lot of range when it comes to ethnicity or the location or the source of food right so the Bijas restaurant that you see in one of the photos the it's a vegetarian restaurant yeah, no, yeah, and it's got, yeah and it's got park and I had it like two days ago right <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, and it's like got a unique system so they charge you according to the weight of food that you eat mm. So you can just go in and do uh, your a la carte menu and then pay, if, if you uh, eat less, then you obviously pay less mm -hmm. and it's super nice. Uh, mm -hmm. Other than that, if you are interested in halal food, if you eat halal food, then don't worry. Like many of our uh, students who eat halal food, they have a worry that they're gonna have some trouble on campus or something. Mm -hmm. But we've got a Turkish plus Indian restaurant on campus, which is halal and it's extremely subsidized. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, you can uh, you can get really tasty halal food there. That's right. Yeah. Uh, let's come to again the boring but important part. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, as far as the learning facilities are, are concerned, they they again they have a very large range. So some students they like you know the library setting where you get books and uh, places where you can just be by yourself and study. So we've got that in the main main library and other uh, random places in the different departments. Mm -hmm. But if you are a person who likes to study in a collaborative environment, then we've got a lot of learning commons for you. So the second picture from the left that you see uh, is from the Chiva Learning Commons. Mm -hmm. And it's a huge space. Uh, it's not just the tables and chairs that you see. It's got a lot of uh, rooms which you can book so for the group discussion. Group discussion and, and right? even like, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say this, but I book them sometimes to watch live streaming matches. <laughs> <laughs> so they're like really good spaces for you to even take a break. That's right. Uh, I, they've got individual rooms with different categories like quiet rooms, deep quiet rooms, and then deep, deep quiet rooms where you can't even take your phone inside. <laughs> so uh, I guess like each and every one of you will be able to find something that they like or a setting which they like. And again, like if you if you don't like to study in the university, then even your hall is gonna have some common room or some study room for you. For to, your room, yeah, yeah, for you to uh, catch up with your studies. Uh, again, um, people normally have the perception that Hong Kong is a concrete jungle only, 
So Hong Kong U is trying to change that perception. Uh, so because of that, we've got a lot of greenery around the campus. Mm. And uh, sustainability, again, is one of the major uh, areas which we try to improve on. So many buildings try to use natural sunlight and everything. Mm. So we are working on energy uh, consumption too. And when it comes to like uh, places for you to relax, then we've got some gardens for you. So if you want to take a break during classes, you can go to one of these gardens and actually uh, be closer to nature. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a lily farm park, which is small but extremely beautiful. So you can even like take your food there and eat yeah. and yeah. have some peace. Um, some other uh, activities that you might be interested in include the mass dance. Now, this is a very huge event. Uh, if you join the DENSO as a member, the DENSO is the Dance Society of Hong Kong U, then you get to prepare for this annual event, which is the Joint University Mass Dance. So what happens is like the DENSO from each university forms different teams of the different years. For example, the freshmen have a different team and the Dendi sophomores have a different team. So all these teams actually perform in one of the uh, universities annually. And then, uh, teams for all the other universities are there so you get to make a lot of friends mm -hmm. and it's it's an i i never miss this event i, I always go even if i have classes <laughs> it, it's really nice like these uh people who run these societies and people who actually train students to dance they, they are super uh talented and mm -hmm. it's like a delight to watch and them. it's always open for the beginners as well right uh, of course like yeah. even the dance who has a beginners unit beginners so class, you can actually yeah. even um the IHP, I think, uh, the IHP offers courses, uh, other than sports courses, it offers some dance courses for mm. you, and that even includes Bollywood dance, it's like so diverse, <laughs> yeah. Uh, again, uh, one of my favorite things about HKU here is that each of the student bodies from the different countries, they get mm. to represent their culture. So when, when universities talk about cultural integration, they normally uh, talk about, like, students just coming together at one place and talking to each other. But HKU actually uh, gives you a platform to express your culture and like hmm. share it. So we've got a lot of cultural nights for the different Turn countries. Country. So uh, on Friday, we have a Nepalese cultural night, even though the Nepalese um, student body is not so big, but hmm. they're having an event by themselves, funded by the university. And I'm going because they also have free food. <laughs> and Nepalese food is super nice. Yes. So uh, we've got a South Asian cultural night for students from Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka. And we've got a Korean cultural night, which I'm sure Park will go to. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> and uh, we've got cultural nights for almost all of the uh, countries and, uh, that, yeah. that are well, from whom like, we have student bodies here. And they are great events for you to actually have first hand experience about the food, dances, sure. uh, music of the different countries. Yeah, so um, you might wonder, like, how do you actually get into a society and just make friends without having a proper, like, step-by-step uh, -step process? So each of the societies, faculties, halls, uh, each of the bodies that we have, they have an orientation mm. for students who are first-timers. So the orientation nights or orientation field trips and orientation activities, they've got... Uh, like they've got some um, events prepared for you in which you can network with the other people who are here. Mm -hmm. So you can uh, take part in like uh, campus hunts or stuff like that. And it's it's really a chance for you to make more friends. And uh, in the first week that you're gonna be here at the HKU, you're gonna also have some um, carnivals for you to choose which universe, uh, which societies or bodies you wanna join. So you can go to their stalls and uh, once you sign up for them, become a member, you will be able to go to one of these orientations. Mm -hmm. And actually, uh, these will be the perfect startup for you in HKU mm -hmm. to get acquainted with the uh, conditions as well as uh, opportunities. Yeah. Last but not the least, uh, I, I like, kept the best thing for the last year. So the Student Ambassador Scheme, it is one of the best bodies, honestly, like totally speaking from an unbiased view that you could join. So you, uh, here again, we have an orientation to start with, in mm -hmm. which you get to uh, meet different people old and new, and even like people from the admissions offices and international office. That's right. So as a student ambassador, what you do is a very big spectrum of activities. 
uh, you represent the university in important events such as the information day and you uh, lead campus tours for people who are uh, visiting our campus visiting, visiting our campus mm -hmm. and you get to like you get to have a lot of uh, gatherings with different student ambassadors too That's like right. we have a lot of dinners and lunches going on and at the end of the year you even get to go to a cultural trip right. to to another country mm -hmm. uh, which is totally all expenses paid so it's really <laughs> wonderful last year uh, the students went to uh, I think they went to Malaysia or Thai they went to Malaysia. Like different countries yeah, yeah every yeah. year and mm. they, they had like uh, student ambassadors who went had, had a wonderful time there mm. so it's four to five days uh, after the exams end mm. uh, and, well, and, you get to May, go, yeah. Yeah, and you get to go to the different schools in those uh, countries and even get a lot of time for yourself to enjoy That's so right. I, I would really recommend like I didn't know about this student ambassador scheme when I first came to Hong Kong. Oh, okay. So I missed the deadline and I, and I couldn't apply. <laughs> so I'm a first time essay in my second year now. And, yeah. and I really regret like not applying in the first year. <laughs> yeah, I would have had a silver badge by now. <laughs> so I guess that's it from uh, Park and me. And yeah. now we are going to take about 30 minutes or more to answer your question. Yeah, of so course. So just fire them in and we are here to help you with anything you like. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Weiss. And yeah, again, thank you everyone for uh, joining this session. So yeah, I think everyone, I, I mean, some of you are already asking some questions. So you can always click the question tab and send us a question by typing. And we will try to answer your question as soon as possible. And yeah, any questions are welcome. So not only about like campus live about our, our camp about the access i mean activities but you can always ask about like a program or any other questions and our student ambassador wise are he is from director of engineering yes. and you're majoring in computer science yes so if you have specific question about like engineering program then you are always welcome to ask and yeah 